Hi, everybody. Good evening. On behalf of my co-host with Stancia, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. Tonight, we really have a spectacular show. I know I've said this <laughs> for many of the shows that we've done, but tonight we have a guest with us who's been a spiritual teacher for 25 years at least. He's, he's a healer. Uh, he's been involved with meditation and, and healing and uh, writing and just tremendous source of, of spiritual information and spiritual healing work. And we're going to be tremendously honored tonight because we have the intention of doing a Buddhist healing fire ceremony that basically, as far as I can tell, has never been on television before, has almost never been photographed before. And for whatever reason these things happen, I think we're going to get a privilege to have this kind of ceremony with us tonight. And actually it's going to be done on me, so I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, so that we're having that, and we're also going to have this incredibly powerful video. I think some of you might have seen it in the, the seasons before. We have a short video from David that we're going to show after Wisconsin's invocation. So really, just cool out, sit down, allow this show to 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 carry you, to carry you to another level of of understanding, of compassion, of love and mercy. Because I think there's the potential for that really to happen tonight. So as we usually do at this time to set a tone for the show, uh, Wistancia leads us in an invocation and a short meditation. So Wistancia. Thank you, Alan. So maybe you can just take a breath with me and we can breathe in the love of Mother and Father God. And we can call forth now all the masters and gods and goddesses of, in the God force. And we call to our I Am Presence asking that that immense higher and highest part of ourself, the truest part of ourself, come now into emerging with our soul and with our personality so that we can come forth in our mastery. We call forth tonight to the five Buddhas and the five Christs. We call forth to Kuan Yin and ask her healing presence to be with us. And we call forth for the bliss of Babaji to permeate the, this room and in your homes. And tonight we call for the open heart. We call to be in resonance with who and what we are. We call to come into the harmony of our life here on earth and of our higher spiritual life and all, all of the gifts of the Holy Spirit to come pouring in. We call for the love and the openness of heart and the quiet, simple emptying out now so that we can be filled. And so maybe with all of the masters and we ask you to set the tone for this room in meditation, we can come into the stillness within our own heart, close our eyes for a moment and relax and prepare ourselves for more. Let's just close your eyes now. Connect with the earth now and with yourself, with your higher self. Become aware of the energy around you, all of your higher bodies and higher chakras.
as we call forth for the building of our light quotient and the building of our love quotient. We ask this night to be in the posture of releasing our karma, of letting go of negative ego, of opening to receive the blessings of the masters for an ascension activation, preparation for our enlightenment, and for the happiness and the joy that this time promises. Thank you. So I think we're going to see David's video now when they're ready. Okay. <laughs> so is David's uh, video ready? You know, for about a year now, I've been wanting to have our guest tonight on the show. I've, I've done some workshops with Bob and, and been reading his books and just kind of studying with him for a while. And it's an honor. It's an honor that you're finally here. So welcome. Thank you. It's an honor to be here, <laughs> finally. <laughs> really. Maybe you can start off by just giving us a little um, background on how you started out, you know, with TM and then take us up to up to now in a few minutes. Yeah. <laughs> we'll move out of time. Thumbnail sketch. Yeah. Um, I don't know, it started when I was a baby. Yeah. <laughs> and, and before. And before. <laughs> I think I knew what I was doing when I came in. Yeah. Um, and I had many visions and dreams to reinforce the experiences. Um, the purpose that I came in to unfold was just opening consciousness to the divine. And as I was wandering around in my college years trying to find my purpose or find my teacher, uh, I wanted to go to India because I felt that that was the place that I could find a teacher. But somehow my teacher came to me and that was Maharishi Maheshogi in the beginning and I must admit that in those days he was far too commercial for my taste but I <laughs> felt some energy that felt right and so I started and it proved to be the most important and successful move I've ever made. Uh, I got thoroughly trained right. uh, and that process took about 15 years one-on-one. -on -one. I was very fortunate uh, to be able to have a lot of personal contact uh, with him and uh, that from there it moved into helping to run the uh, Age of Enlightenment television programming channel 18 mm -hmm. the license to San Bernardino here in California so we put on Age of Enlightenment New Age programming perfect health perfect news mm -hmm. positive news and programs about mm -hmm. enlightenment so you're an old hand at this television. I've been doing it for a little bit. Yeah. But it's been a while. So you were teaching the TM? 
I helped to set up the TM movement. Uh, I was one of the first six of 16 area coordinators, as we were called, back in 1970, uh, to help to organize the TM movement, organize the teachers and the work that they were doing, uh, help to train them, lay all the groundwork and foundation for what has now become a worldwide movement. And can you talk about the Council of Light just briefly and how how, how, the Council of Light came, came later, uh, much later. Mm -hmm. I was very lucky in those days in TM, actually, I was more rebellious. I didn't follow in the norm, and I always seemed to have my own ideas, but they would later be reinforced by Maharishi. Uh, I found that everything that I was th thinking was always in alignment with, with his thought. And that was an important part of my training. Uh, because we can look into new realities for ourselves, but we need to have verification for those new realities as well and guidance along the way. So when it came time many years later for me to begin channeling, I got messages from masters like Sananda and Sanat Kamara and others uh, whom I had never heard of at that point. And uh, later, much later, Sananda introduced himself as Jesus. I said, oh yeah, I know you. Uh, <laughs> and I was asked to set up the Council of Light in 1988, and just following the harmonic convergence right. officially. You were asked by Maharishi. No, that way did you did you left? <clears throat> in I sense? never left, but my friends asked me to. Uh, <laughs> my heart is still always with my teacher and with meditation. Um, in that sense, I never left, although I outgrew. Uh -huh. uh, at a certain point, the bird needs to leave the nest. Right. It was my time. Uh -huh. uh, I lost a lot of friends right. um, at that time and had to go to a new cycle of friends, but I had to follow my own growth. And uh, my growth was what was real, so I followed that. Paid attention to what the masters were saying, but I thought I was making it up. Right. Takes a while. If all channels are, were honest, they would tell you they think they're making it up most of the time. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> because we get these messages in our head. It's not like a voice coming out of the sky saying, Moses, build me an ark. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, and so we have to trust the guidance and verify it in whatever way we can. And when Sananda and Sanat Kumar asked me to start a worldwide movement, a council, and the way that they phrased it was, this was already an existing organization in heaven that's now trying to precipitate here on earth. And that the people who are a part of it know that they are a part of it and will come forward. And I said, well, okay, so I'll start it as if it's already done. Again, that was my training from Maharishi. Right. Start a project as if it's done already. So I started with the vision of a large council. Now we're over 200 ministers strong throughout the world. Uh, we're in South Africa, we're in England, Austria, Japan, uh, throughout Asia, all over the United States, South America, Canada. I know the day that, the day that you facilitated my, my, minister, my becoming a minister was yeah. one, of the, one of the highlights of my entire life. That was Many really people such have said a that. day. Yeah. Because what it is, it's a reaffirmation of your commitment to your higher self and to your divine purpose. So it's not so much what I do, but what you have already committed to. And by right. declaring it and stepping forward to become a minister of the council again, also not only is recognizing yourself, but recognizing the others that are part of council. Yeah, it was a big turning point for me. <clears throat> yeah. and, and what is the function of the council of light? To bring light. That's all. If I were more specific than that, then I would automatically rule out some people's work because the truth is that council involves many different avenues of approach and including opposition because there are many opposing points of view but this point of view may be right for this segment of the population or mother earth and this uh, point of view over here may be right for another segment of the population and father in heaven so so maybe you could just bring us into the vision vision meditation and how how that happened and and tell us about that. Well, it was interesting because my life as a meditation teacher had proceeded for about 19 years. Uh, and even before I started TM, I was 
getting my visions and meditating and remembering scriptures. And at one point, I was walking through the mountains in New Hampshire and threw off all my jewelry and said, "Now I'm a monk. I don't own any possessions." And, uh, devote myself to God. So when I started to channel, and my friends in the TM organization walked away and said, "You shouldn't be doing that," uh, for whatever reasons yeah. they had. Right. I said, okay, I'll see what comes to And the information was not in alignment with the meditation in terms of language. It was more Christian, Western oriented. Mm -hmm. right. uh, no Vedic language, no Sanskrit. <clears throat> right. And uh, so I, for 10 years, I taught the language of Sananda. And all of a sudden one day, everything just came together in my life all the things that I had done, uh, all the bizarre things and out of way things, all of a sudden they all made sense. Everything made sense to me. It all just crystallized in this one moment. And in that moment, I also saw that there was something inside, very deep inside, like a seed that wanted to emerge. I had no idea what that was. And I knew that the only way I'm going to get there and understand that is to be quiet. So I just allow myself to be quiet and listen, and pay attention, and gradually something unfolded in the form of five mantras, or five seed sounds. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I had to do was locate where they came from, and they came from inside of me, and something that I knew from previous times, but I knew that also I was being guided to find them. And the two references I found was Sanat Kumara and the Master Babaji. Sanat Kumara in the Bible is known as the Ancient of Days. He is the oldest soul, first created soul, and the master who brought counsel here to earth. Babaji is recorded in India to have been born 2,000 years ago. He is still in a body. Uh, he has not lost his body. He has not aged. He still looks, as in his picture, uh, about 25 years of age. Mm -hmm. Nice trick, huh? <laughs> Don't you wish we could stay 25 years of age? So anyway, they were the ones we that know all that we me. know now. Really? Mm -hmm. um, and opened our eyes, opened my eyes to see these mantras and to understand their techniques. Now my next task was to go to some sources to verify them because the one thing that I learned from my training with Maharishi is you do not fool around with mantras. Nobody channels mantras. These are mm -hmm. too precise because we're working with a level that is more subtle than subatomic particles. So if you introduce something that powerful into the human nervous system, you better be accurate right down to the finest detail. So the first thing I wanted to do was to look in different ancient scriptures to see if I could find the techniques and in fact I found them in five different sources. So that was enough verification. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> I didn't want to come forward. I just sat on them for mm -hmm. many months, actually, and continued my channeling until mm -hmm. one day someone came for a channeling who was ready to go in for cancer surgery. And Merlin was speaking at the time and said that if this channel, as he put it, referring to me, would ever get up off his seat and give out the techniques that he was given, people like you could be helped. And oh I, my. I said, okay, Merlin, thanks a lot. You've done it again. Really? Put you on the spot. Put me on the spot. And I, after the channeling was over, I scheduled an appointment. And uh, even though I had all this experience with TM teaching meditation, I wasn't so sure that the techniques that I had received were going to work. I mean, it's mm -hmm. one thing receiving something directly from a physical master, but it's another thing to get it inside. Mm -hmm. And when I taught him, sure enough, it did work. Oh. And I, I Someone it for, got it from inside first, probably. Yeah, somewhere. Somewhere, sometime. At the beginning of right. time. Right. Uh, and so over the next two years, actually, I taught it very quietly, just among friends. And then the big breakthrough happened when I was in Japan. And my promoter in Japan asked me if it wasn't something that I could teach that had nothing to do with language. Right. Um, I said, yeah, I could teach some meditation techniques. And a big wave was created. I had about 300 people learn in the very first course. 
and uh, they had great results, every single one of them. And mm -hmm. none of them could speak English, and I couldn't speak Japanese. I was going through a translator, and it, it worked. It really worked. And I continued to teach there for about a year and a half before then I came back and introduced the techniques here in the United States. And they are powerful. Yeah, they're, they're very, very powerful. powerful. Yeah. And we can't talk about them precisely. They, they're, they're given in a certain a special ceremony. Yeah, they are. And there's a lot of details that come along with it. But we can say that at the beginning of creation, when the silence that we know as God moved, that it moved first as seed sounds or vibrations. And mm -hmm. at the very beginning of time, the atmosphere was clear enough so that those masters who were existing then, because masters did exist at the very beginning of mm -hmm. time, that they could see those sounds precisely. And they then had the responsibility to pass it down generation after generation. Now, we're fortunate because all of those masters still are alive. As amazing as that sounds, they are alive. Mm -hmm. They're, they may not be in corporeal forms right. like we have, they're absolutely alive. But they are eternal beings, <laughs> right. and their job is to make sure that the wisdom to connect back to Source is always there for every human being to receive. So, so these five mantras, I mean, the, the, they're all different. There's actually more than them so now. They oh. keep adding on. Yeah. They're seeing more. Now I've started, Do they have different <laughs> like uses and yes. functions? Yes. Each mantra has a specific vibration. The first thing that, to know about a, a bija mantra is that it takes you down to the seed and into source. So it, within two minutes, it directly connects you to God. That's quite a statement. That's a That's statement. Okay. <laughs> but, but see, the thing is that we keep forgetting that God is not unreachable. Right. God is inside of everything. So God should be right there, ready at hand. All we need to know is the correct avenue to take to reach him or her or it or the silence. Yeah. Right. Yeah? So this is just a direct avenue into the silence inside. There's nothing that the mind can do to interfere in that process when it's learned correctly. You know, Bob, you, you sort of, um, I, I, when I look at you, it sort of symbolize all the traditions. I mean, really, East meets West, you know, in this Bob Pickens. Thank you. <laughs> really, I mean, that's what's, well, that's, that's what I that's always astounded I me. And that's yeah. so beautiful because yeah. all those paths to God, you know, and, and all these, you've worked with so many masters, Western, Eastern, all different yeah. kinds, and then this, Lately, in the last couple of years, the work that you that you've been doing over in Thailand is, is this whole other kind yeah. of ex flavor, you know. And well, it's very interesting. I've been teaching for actually more than thirty years, and uh, I just turned fifty uh, six months ago. Uh, and you've got a five, long way to go to two thousand. Yeah, I'll make it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, Five years ago, I had been teaching for 25 years and feeling like everything that I knew was inside of me. And that's a wonderful place to be, to have access to any information that you need. And I found that that was true with the channeling, that information that I had no concept of before would come through and I could verify it and it was accurate most of the time. I mean, no one's perfect. I mean, there's no such thing as a 100% right. perfect channel. But there was a great deal of accuracy there. And then I ran across this incredible being in Thailand who was a channel and healer yeah. for a being named Japu. Jiao in Chinese and in Thai means an overseer of gods and goddesses. Uh, maybe it's just for the land, maybe it's for the country, maybe it's for a whole world, maybe it's for galaxies. Right. Okay. Bu in Thai means grandfather. So this means grandfather of the Jowls, or grandfather of those overseeing other gods and goddesses. So it's pretty it's high a big being. one. Yeah, it's right. a big one. Yeah. And as Japu has put it, we have studied with Japu for lifetimes. And the gods come to study with Japu as well and masters who are not in non-physical bodies go to study with Japu as well. Right. And this lady was here bringing him forth with all of his teachings and healings. And I walked on the property after an amazing adventure just getting there. This was way back in the rice fields. Yeah. Uh, but you had heard about this through, you didn't just stumble upon it. Right? I did just stumble upon it. Well, 
I went to Hong Kong on my way to Thailand to live. Uh-huh. And when I stopped in Hong Kong, some friends of mine had organized a big course there for me. And my very first student was from Indonesia, and she said, "There is someone in Chiang Mai you need to meet," and gave me this lady's name and address. Well, it took me two months of living in Thailand before I finally got around to finding this person, and that wow. was wow. Petri, who channels Japan. Um, anyway, when I got there. I was all struck. I was humbled. I felt clumsy. I felt like a student again. And hip hip hooray! I mean, here I am now. Finally, after 25 years of teaching, feeling like a student again, and the adventure was beginning all over. Yeah. And when I go there, most people in Thailand have no idea who I am in Japan, in America, and other places mm-hmm. in the world. So I'm just another Joe, <laughs> you know. And it's great because I. I'm allowed to feel clumsy and learn and do all the things that a student does. Do you live on the property now? No, no. I have my own home, and I bring tours to Thailand regularly to show people the temples and introduce them to some extraordinary monks and to some extraordinary energies and show them a different face of spirituality. Yeah. So the ceremony that that you're going to this fire ceremony, this Thai Buddhist healing. Fire ceremony that you're going to be doing tonight. Yeah. Can you, you want to talk a little bit about it? Well, the first thing I need to say about it is I shouldn't really be doing it on TV, but I've asked permission. I feel like that's an honor, yeah, that's and I thank you yeah. for that. Well, and it's because of the two of you that I'm doing it. So, uh, so they checked us out. <laughs> well, yeah, he needs it. They say <laughs> uh, because some things they are extraordinary. And it doesn't mean that they're extraordinary, extraordinary. I mean, the energy is very powerful, very wonderful, as you'll see. But many things on this planet are misunderstood. Mm-hmm. And the greatest tragedy of real knowledge is to present it in a way that it's not understood, and particularly in a neg- understood in a negative way. Right. The last thing I want is for people to think of it as magic. Uh, Japo is very clear with all the healing techniques. As extraordinary as they are, they are very scientific. And Japo has invited many doctors. We've had several go over there, including uh, Dr. Doris Rapp, who has done a lot of research on environmental illness for children, mm-hmm. and many other physicians from Europe and America, and as well in Thailand and Japan. Uh, mostly by by my doing, <laughs> I twist yeah. around and have them come over, right. and they've. They've been very impressed with the work and very impressed with Japu, and Japu has been very impressed with them and, and assures them that there is nothing magical about the work or mysterious about it. That anything can be understood with the right uh, training, mm-hmm. and that it is very specific training and very detailed. And once those details are understood, you can do almost anything. Yeah. The primary work is with Mother Earth. And isn't she the one that we all need to be paying attention to now?、Mm. Because she's the mother of our bodies. She's the mother of everything on the planet that feeds us. She's the mother of the air and the waters that we drink.、Yeah. So if anyone understands what needs to be healed, she does. Not just her fields and her waters and her air, but the human body, all the elements that we have in our body come from us. From the earth, it says that in the Bible. From, from dust we come, from dust、mm-hmm. we shall return. From the earth,、yeah. so Mother Earth is the one that we approach. And when I started my training, I did series after series of offerings, very lavish offerings of fruit and flowers and、uh, incense and candles、uh, for months and months at a time,、mm-hmm. until I was able to receive the gift. And even before we started the show, I needed to go out and do my offering in the earth. And、right. I did my offering. Nobody knew here, but I did it. <laughs> I put five candles and and some incense、yeah. in the earth, and honored Mother Earth. Put my hands down on her and said, "Thank you, and give me the energy that I need to receive to assist with the show today, and、right. assist with Alan's healing." What did you get? Did you get an answer? Don't do it. No. Well, it was like electric current. <laughs> right. Oh my God. <laughs> no, Are you sure you could take this off? Yeah. <laughs> Will you speak for just a minute or two before you get set up over there about the language? Yeah. Okay.、Um, 
Mother Earth, in addition to being responsible for the physical side of creation, i.e. the waters, the hills, our bodies, we need to also understand that Mother Earth is the same as Mother Nature. And nature is alive. We tend to want to make it in this century scientific and cold. Uh, we've used a very cold language to describe Mother Earth. But the truth is that Mother Earth is alive and everything is alive. And everything has intelligence. Nature has intelligence. Where there is life, there is intelligence. And that can be communicated with. And people throughout all the cultures on the planet communicate on a regular basis with what they call angels and gods, plants, animals. Right. And so this intelligence can be talked to and it has its own language. Japu calls it the language of the devas or devic language. We can call it the language of the angels. It's not a human language. It's not written down in any culture anywhere. Right. But it can be learned. And there are mantras and techniques that kind of plug you into it and, and get you started with learning the language. And then it takes practice. And from practice, the energy comes in. And then it's a matter of building up the power so that the language works. So now after five years of study, the language works somewhat for me. And I can talk to any realm of the gods or angels. I can talk to any realm of your body, the cells of your body. Uh, I can talk to spirits, <coughs> discarnates. Yeah. They all understand the same language, though they are human. And they would understand the language. Mm -hmm. And any other non-physical beings. Yeah. It's nice that to have that gift because then you're talking in their language right. you know, and they understand it more clearly than if you're trying to speak in English or some other language. Mm -hmm. So when I do the fire ceremony and any of the other forms of healing, I'll talk to the gods and angels first. And I ask their permission. Yeah. The first thing I do is apologize because I'm interfering with a natural process here. When we do healing, we're interfering with a natural process. Yeah. The person has a right to their own karma. The land has a right to its own karma, to the way that it has been unfolding. So even though I'm giving it a gift, I still need to ask for forgiveness, and uh, I ask permission, mm -hmm. and I ask for support. Yeah. And I ask that directly of the intelligence, both of your body and of the angels, your guardians, the masters that are there serving you, and then I can proceed. Well, I'm ready to watch this I'm beautiful really ceremony. So maybe the two of you can slip off to the side okay. and uh, and get ready sure. to do that. Okay. And uh, in the while they're getting ready, while they're getting ready to uh, do the fire ceremony, maybe I can just remind all of you that we are having a New Year's Eve event here with Michael Hammer. The beautiful music that you hear behind the, the soundtrack for all the shows here. That's Michael Hammer, and he plays four synthesizers at once, and he's playing really amazingly beautiful music that takes you into the higher dimensions. It's very good music for meditation and for reaching higher states of consciousness. And he will be in town on New Year's Eve, and we'll have an event. We'll be kind of connecting up with the the masters, the cosmic masters and planetary masters who also have a retreat on New Year's Eve. And we'll be going to the Royal Tetons and connecting with them in their wondrous event where they bless the earth for the coming year after looking at the harvest of the previous year. And so we're gonna have meditation and songs and Michael Hammer music and everyone's invited to Get a, try and get a ticket and you can call 687-2053 if you're interested and um, see and also you can get the tickets at Paradise Found. Now I have experienced this fire ceremony that's about to take place and it's a very sacred ceremony. It's so beautiful to hear Bob speaking the, the language of the devas and he'll, he'll 
maybe talk a little bit about it. So as soon as you're ready, please go over to the black wall and let Bob introduce it. Thank you. Okay, well, what I'm going to start with uh, is a process of writing mantras on Alan's head, uh, also using the data language. These are mantras or symbols of the Deva language that allows his guardians and his assistants to move through his crown chakra and move through his spine and his body to help with the healing. Uh, it is accessing his crown chakra to his higher self, and the higher self is inclusive of all the guardians and masters that work with us. There's really no separation in the universe. It's all one. Uh, it's like one big ocean with many different kinds of waves on it. So when I write the mantras on his head, uh, Alan, what I would like you to do is just breathe in and just imagine that there's golden light coming into the top of your head and that you're going to run that down through your body and uh, anything that you want to let go of, you move out through your hands and through your feet, okay? Before I write the mantra on his head, I need to empower my implement uh, with the Deva language and I bring the energy through the different Buddhas and Masters. In this case, I use Buddhas only because that's the tradition that I've learned this in. I could use as easily a picture of Jesus and Mary up here. Uh, but the tradition that this I was trained in uses Buddha, so I'll call on Buddha. Uh, and I just want to do that very briefly. <laughs> And I use the breath to convey the mantra to the tip of the implement. And these are very specific symbols. So just keep breathing in that energy. Anything that you start to feel, Alan, it's all right. When the light comes in, it's said that the bats want to leave the cave. Okay? So wherever there's any karma or anything that's not supposed to be in there that doesn't support the light, then it will start to move out. Let's move this bowl back a little bit. We use the five elements. The element of fire is the primary element that I bring the energy through with. And I will call the energy through the images, through the flame, through my hand, and into Alan. And in the meantime, uh, the wax will be poured into the water. If there is something that needs to be cleared, the wax starts to turn black. Sometimes there's shades of gray, depending on how intense it is, uh, that need, whatever it is that needs to be cleared. And uh, if there's nothing that needs to be cleared, Alan is a clear guy. Why? We don't have to worry. It'll be pure white. Okay? But if it turns, then I need to keep going until the color turns back to clear again, which is my sim uh, sign that it's been finished. So we have fire. We have my hand, which represents earth, my breath, which represents air, and water. The fifth element, which is the space or akash, is represented by mind. I use five candles to represent the five elements. The first thing I need to do is bring the energy into the flame. Okay. 
Ja mä hittelessin mit hit kissen mit hit kissen mit And so now I bring a current from here through here through my hand and I send it into Alan and we're just going to continue as you have been Alan bringing the energy through the top of your head down into your heart and send it out through your feet So makira hisa makira kisa de makira kisa 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 makira Y eres mi quiere, es mi quiere, que tres mi quiere, que tres mi quiere, es mi quiere, que tres 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 mi quiere. Y eso me quiere que se me quiere que se quiere que se me 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 quiere que se
I hope that everyone really enjoyed and, and picked up on the energy of that ceremony and just how do you feel? I feel pretty high. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What does it feel like for that to pass through you? Uh, at this point I'm used to it, but mm -hmm. it feels it feels like a stream of energy. I mean, it's a current. It's yeah. a very powerful, very wide current that just comes through me. Right. I, I usually feel it coming in this way. If, if uh, but I also want, will then make sure that I'm aware of the current going this way. You need mm -hmm. to direct the energy. Now, if the, if the person is really <laughs> blocked in a way, would you feel like resistance in your yeah. head? Yeah, I would. And, or otherwise, it's like passing right through and passing right out the other person. By the time I do, I usually do other preparatory work, other kinds of healing work before I give the person the fire ceremony. Uh, so they're usually not resistant by that point, but there may be something inside of them that's resistant. Right, that's what I meant. Yeah. yeah. So if there's some and the karma, would be wanting to do or it. spirit, if right. there's a spirit in there, right. uh, the light will kick it out right away. Um, in which case, then they can start to move around and shake and all kinds of things. Uh, but. I don't really feel the resistance coming this way. I can encounter it or I can see. I have x-ray vision. So while I'm doing it, I'm looking inside, I'm looking at their guardians, I'm looking at their aura, I'm looking at all different places. I keep scanning and keep looking mm -hmm. to see if there's something that needs to be clearing. As soon as mm -hmm. my awareness hits something that is dark or needs to clear, I'll notice that the, the wax is also reflecting. Right. Uh, and as you saw this weekend, there was one lady that we worked on for about 15 or 20 minutes and first it would mm -hmm. get dark and then it would clear and then I think I'm done and all of a sudden it gets dark again oh we're working over here now and then that got done and okay over here now I was worried yeah. about the candles in your <laughs> mastery of fire yeah yeah and I thought, oh, it'll be under control, yeah, somehow. It's under control so we have just a little bit more time now is there anything else about the healing ceremony that you'd like to talk about or can we talk a little bit about ascension and and this time. I think that's more important, okay. the ascension work. Yeah, maybe uh, you can... Because the healing is just to get us there. And I define healing as getting back to God. Right. And healing is not just about fixing the physical body. If it were about fixing the physical body, we would just die anyway. Yeah. I mean, old age and death are have been a natural consequence of life. Our original birthright is to be eternal beings. We were created in the image of God and God is eternal. That means we were created in the image of eternity. Mm. Anything less than that, uh, we got a raw deal. You know, uh, this body's 11, <laughs> yeah. but we can't <laughs> trade it back in. So we need to elevate it and take it back to its original status. The healing is what does that. All the ailments that come up in our body are really in some way blocking God in us. It is better to say that the ailment, what by the time it expresses itself in our body, is now been dislodged. That there has been something already in us for a long time that has blocked our awareness to God. Right. And that now God's light has moved that boulder and set it loose. So that it's coming tumbling out in the form of a flu, in the form of aches and pains, in the form of some emotional crisis. Uh, but these things are symptoms of the leaving or exiting right. of the block to God. Yeah. So it's actually just the opposite. When people say they're sick, they're actually healing. Instead of saying getting you're getting, ready to... getting sick, you should say I'm getting well. Yeah. Because now it's finally leaving my body. Thank you very much for serving me all this time, but right. goodbye. Yeah. So it's what people say that they're releasing. Right? Is that yes? That's I always have problems with people who've been releasing for like 32 years now. It always scares me. <laughs> you know, they're always sick and they're always releasing. Hey, well, this body is a mountain of mud. You know, uh -huh. it's a mountain of karma. So it could take a long time to. It will. You're not ascended until you're light. So if someone is running around saying that they've ascended, but you can still see them and touch them, and they break and they hurt. They're not ascended yet. Ascension means light, and it has to start first with clearing the karma. Your awareness has to be enlightened and filled with light before your body can be filled with light. Yeah. Otherwise, I, I'm always laughing when people talk about spaceships and machines that can transform your body into light. Well, if we mm -hmm. go into light and they somehow let us in up there in heaven, I think they're going to look at us and say, well, look what you've done on Earth. I think you need to go back there. 
don't take your habits with you into heaven. We have to refine our habits like here that first old joke, before we're going to go up into heaven. Yeah. That old joke, give him his dollar back and tell him to go to hell or something. Yeah, something like more that. More of it, It's the longest story we want you to talk okay. about. I'll tell it next show if anybody's interested. But the long and the short of it is that it is a wonderful process. It's bringing in the light. It's going to be clearing, and yes, we'll be releasing for 30 years, 50 years, 100 years, maybe a thousand years, uh -huh. hopefully in the same body. Uh -huh. uh, but every step is going to be more joy and more liberation because re releasing means it's gone, and now you're more free. If, if you could like give the vast multitudes of our studio audience out there, like a minute or two minute, a piece of advice, what would it be? Actually, Stop, five minutes. look, and listen. Mm. Stop, look, and listen inside. We don't stop. We keep running. We don't pay attention, so we don't look. And we certainly don't have time to listen. And because of this, we're very clumsy. We make a lot of mistakes. We push others' buttons. We step on their toes. And we're constantly offending people and Mother Earth. And we think that we know what we're doing. Yeah, it's all up here in our head. We've become very proud, particularly as Americans. We become very, very proud. It's time to humble ourselves and realize, hey, we don't know everything. And when you think you have an idea, you're listening to that instead of paying attention to what's going on outside. I try to be in the I don't know 100% of the time. Because when I don't know, then I'll stop, I'll look, and I'll listen and the information will come. That's interesting because I always say that if people look at the sky, you know, for one minute or one second every day and realize we're hurtling through this space on a ball and really whatever they think is reasonable, they don't know. I mean, it's just, that's we really humbling. don't know. That would just, yeah, that would help a little. That would be humbling. Well, that's the idea that Zen used to teach, to give something that would make the mind stop in its tracks, look, and listen. And so as for this time, this time when you know your book Ascension, the time time is at hand, the time is now. This is a lot of energies are pouring in now, so yes, so we are moving forward in, on our spiritual evolution. In the at next this time. four or five years, a lot's going to happen, as if it hasn't been happening already. It, it's, well, it's, it's gonna, dynamic. <laughs> it's, it's going to exponentially increase on both sides. The good is right. going to get better, and the bad is going to get worse. Now, it doesn't mean that the bad is really getting worse. It means that the bad is just releasing more. So it's more visible. Right. Maybe it's more painful. But it is going on its way out. And pain is just a signal that something's been needing attention for a long time. So give it attention, give it love, and it'll start to clear. So it's really a, a perfect time if a we time. haven't already to <laughs> really make a connection with Source now so that we can move through these times really graciously. Everyone is making a connection with Source. Yes. The question is, how much do they know about that right. connection? Yeah, we are already connected, connected with Source. That's why these shows are important and the teachings right. are important, because people are making their connection. Right. The more they hear about it, the more they understand about it. And the more you understand, the more it increases. The two things feed each yeah. other, knowledge and experience. Yeah. Experience and knowledge. We're on our way. Yeah. So, you're in Thailand now to be with this this teacher, in essence. I'm in Thailand point. because I love to be there. It's very nurturing. Uh, I can relax. I can't always relax here, and it's my home. You feel and like I also that's have the icing on the cake of having a great teacher there. Uh huh. But you feel like at this point that that's more your home. Yeah, it is. Yeah. That's a long story in, That's in and of itself. Story, yeah. But he's, thank God, you come back around here. I come to yeah, the States all uh, the two world. or three times a year. Yeah. I go to Japan about the same amount of time, uh, Hong Kong, Singapore. And doing workshops and teachings and healings. Yeah. And, and now uh, hundreds of people are starting the Bija meditation in South America, so I'll probably be going to South America as well. Well, I just want to thank you so much for coming, and, and that healing was really wonderful. And so, if anybody wants to, you know, get in touch with me about any of Bob's, any information about Bob, or about the New Year's tickets, please call 
God bless you. We love you. 805-687-2053. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Good night. You.